Marcus Conti reporting. I shall give you proof, unequivocal proof, that Donald Trump is promoting poverty in America. Is he doing it wittingly or is he just doing it? We're going to find out. So the deficit, the trade deficit in America has ballooned another $100 billion in America. It's up to 800 and something billion dollars, right? And take a look at all these numbers, and uh, I want to show you something. I know, I know, you guys, you guys, you love your Trump, but Trump is—he's driving us into the poorhouse, right? Why? He, I know, I know, he inherited the problem, but he's continuing the problem. He's escalating the goddamn problem. So let's, um, you know, hyperinflation in the country, right? We don't have hyper hyperinflation in Venezuela, not in the United States, right? No, we we have hyperinflation, underemployment. Uh, you know, corporate handouts still going on, right? Could give tax breaks to the billionaires, perpetual war, right? Keep the money machine going, the, the wars, right? Give Venezuela's money to Goldman Sachs. You heard that one? They're fucking, they're taking, the, they're funneling the money. I just heard that shit. They're funneling the money. Venezuela's oil that's supposed to go and feed the people. They, Goldman Sachs, uh, Steve Mnuchin, the secretary of the treasury, gotten in the way and sent, uh, diverted Venezuela's money to Goldman Sachs. That's a good idea, right? It's good for Goldman Sachs and all the billionaires that profit from their, uh, their having money in Goldman Sachs's accounts, right? You can't have one because it's $10 million or more to have an account with Goldman Sachs. So the billionaires are doing well with Goldman Sachs by stealing Venezuela's oil. And so he's turning a blind eye on poverty. Mr. Trump turns a blind eye on money and politics, right? And uh, get rid of the Fed. <laughs> Trump, get rid of the Fed. Are you fucking crazy? Break up the banks. <laughs> Give them tax breaks, right? Turns a bl- blind eye on election fraud, right? So these are, all the, these are all the ongoing problems in our country. But let's look at the big one that just made the headline, right? In a blow to Trump America... In below to Trump, America's trade deficit in goods hits record eight hundred and ninety-one billion dollars. Now, what the hell is a trade deficit? I'm going to explain it to you in a second. Right? Well, let's look at it now. Right? So, what is a trade deficit? Is a trade that's trickle-down economics. Trade deficit. Trade deficit. What is a trade? Oh, trade deficit. Here we go. What is a trade deficit? A trade deficit is an economic measure of international trade in which a company's imports exceed its exports. Right? In other words, we buy more than we sell. We consume more than we make. Right? Now, Trump's whole theory on economics is the trade deficit, right? Remember when he said it? Well, if you forgot, I'm going to play it for you. You'll, you'll see exactly you know, what's going on. But uh, that's the, the essence of it. So all of Trump's tax breaks, all of Trump's theory on on how fucking brilliant, the brilliant mind of Don, economic genius of Donald Trump, the casino m- monger, right, is running our economy like a casino, right? And he said that the trade deficit would come down, but it went up. Right? What does it mean in terms of, what does it mean to you and I? It means that jobs, right? How does trade deficits affect job outlook? In the long run, trade deficits may lead to fewer jobs. <laughs> of course. If the country is importing more goods from foreign companies, prices will decline and domestic companies may be able uh, may be unable to produce items that compete with lower costs. Of course, right? So manufacturing companies are usually hit the hardest. Uh, but I thought I thought Trump is all about manufacturing and he's all about the Rust Belt and he's he's making America great again, bringing back jobs. But his, his whole philosophy, his whole um, uh, his whole uh, theory on life is backwards, basically. Right? So so that's that's what so it basically it, it, this impact results in fewer jobs or lower income for employees due to competition for imports. Right? Fewer jobs mean fewer products are produced in the economy, which in turn leads to even more imports than a greater deficit. Right? So, so America's trade deficit in goods with the rest of the world rose to its highest level in history last year 
As the United States imports a record number of products, including including from China, widening the deficit to $891 billion. That's $100 billion more than it was, I think, when Trump came in. Right. So uh, the increase was driven by some factors outside of Trump's control. No, not really. It's, it's driven by Trump's belief in trickle-down economics that has failed. Right. Like a global... Uh, like a global economic slowdown and a relative uh, relative strength of the United States dollar, both of which weakened overseas demand for American goods. But the widening gap was also exacerbated by Trump's $1.5 trillion tax cut. Yeah, of course, which has been largely financed by government borrowing and the trade war. Right? It is a case of textbook economics catching up with some of uh, Mr. Trump's unorthodox economic policies. He doesn't have an economic policy. Right? U.S. trade deficit grows by more than $1 billion under Trump. So there it is, you know. Everybody's reporting it. Uh, in 2018, it grew $69 billion, but it's a total of $100 billion since Trump came in. So, so we're going the wrong way. Right? The, the, the economy is going the wrong way. We're supposed to be bringing the jobs back, but what happens? Because you have socialism for the rich, when you give tax breaks to the billionaires, what do they do? They get lazy, right? Corporations don't reciprocate. They take the money, they sit on it, and that's one less thing they have to think about, right? Their pressure's off. They've returned cap. The government gave them tax breaks. They just turn it over, you know, the price of stock goes up. Who cares? You know, whatever. But they don't generate jobs or anything. They hunt for cheaper Right, cheaper labor abroad. Right, so it's a failed idea giving tax breaks. This is the essence of trickle down economics. Right? Here's more evidence. Trump's plan to reduce trade deficit falters as it hits an all time high instead. <laughs> it's fucking backwards, man. Right? So here's trickle down economics. What is trickle down economics? Remember this guy? <laughs> You know, Reagan, he's, he's going to tell you how that run. He's an actor, another actor. Another fucking actor is going to tell you how the economy works. So here's your taxes. Right? Here's your taxes. Oh, you know what I wanted to play? I wanted to play my, uh, my, my good friend. Oh, no, no, no. Where's, where's my friend? Where's my friend? Where's my friend? Oh, yeah, let's talk about this guy for a second. Listen, so socialism, right? Socialism, check this shit out. This is the president. America will never be a socialist country. This is my friend, High Impact Flicks. Thank you, Mr. High Impact Flicks, for describing to us socialism in America. That's the fucking devil, right? Listen. First of all, whether we like it or not, socialism has had a huge impact on America. You can say we're not a socialist country all you want, but you'd be hard pressed to explain away the massive socialist programs that are still going on in this country today. Programs like the military industrial complex, social security. Has there been anything more socialist than social security? Roads and highways, the postal service, war, public landfills, farm subsidies, the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, the TSA, NSA, how about NASA? We give NASA $55 million every single day. Not every single year, every single day. The EPA, congressional health care, museums, public schools, corporate subsidies, food stamps. How about foreign aid? And guys, this doesn't even scratch the surface of socialist programs that we have in this country. To say that we are not a socialist country in some way is to disregard the facts that daily dangle before our eyes. <laughs> All right, so, so there's Mr. Impact, right? He lays out the foundation for you. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bit of a, a, a dickhead when it comes to understanding the full picture. But what he's doing is he's telling you that, that there are we have social programs in this country. What do you want to do? You want to get rid of the museums? You want to get rid of the police? I say get rid of the FBI and the CIA. But the point is that it's not that the social programs are killing the country. It's that the, you know, we could get rid of a few of them. Get rid of, I would vote for getting rid of CIA and give people health care, right? So it's not the social programs that are draining 
the country, like the like the the billionaires want you to believe, because that's where they're stealing the money, right? They don't want to give it to the people; they want to put it in their pocket, right? It's socialism for them, right? So we need to to reallocate those funds. That's that's a, a, a functioning government, right? But uh, so that's all. I mean, is it because uh, I know I know people are gonna say, socialism, I don't want fucking socialism, Venezuela, they eat their dogs. I, I know. So here we go. So we're back at Reagan, right? Here's the actor who's the whole theory of economics today is based on Reaganomics. That's what Trump believes. Trump is a, a Reaganomics, a Reaganomics guy, right? Reagan, fucking Reagan was the genius. Oh, he's just like Trump. He's so, so, ouch. He's so fucking smart. Oh, my God. He has actor experience, right? Ronald Reagan. God damn, he's a fucking economic genius. So what is trickle-down economics? Trickle-down economics also called trickle-down theory, refers to the economic propositions that taxes on businesses and the wealthy in society should be reduced as a means to stimulate business investment in the short term and benefit society at large in the long term. Makes sense, right? In recent history, the term has been called supply-side economics, right? Trickle-down, it was a joke, Will Rogers, trickle down economics. The idea that that the, the raining down of the it's gonna it's gonna rain down on us. The the wealth from the corporation is gonna rain down. And what what did we learn from from that theory? Is that corporations don't reciprocate. They take the money, they put it in their pocket. Right now, you see the you see the dispar this disparity in income and wealth inequality. I'll play some. I'll throw some charts up there. It'll explain. Where we were and where we are now. What else? So, so here's, uh, here's Reagan saying it in his own words. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. But so, so government is the problem. So his idea was to deregulate and give Wall Street unlimited, you know, reign of the farm, right? But meanwhile, we have these programs that do work. Right? It's not, it's not the, that isn't the problem. The problem isn't social problems. The problem is corporatization and monopoly and oligarchy. That, that is the, the fundamental economic problem. And Trump doesn't get it. Trump is, is, is technically a buffoon in this area. So let's see. He's saying, now Trump, now not only is Trump a buffoon, but he's also a liar. He's on television saying that, well, let's hear what he said. Thanks to our powerful trade policies, the trade deficit is falling and falling and falling, and boy, did it fall this quarter. He lied, right? He's lying. The trade, you just found that the trade deficit is increasing and increasing and increasing. And I bet 90% of the people in this crowd don't know what a trade deficit is anyway. That's, what, that's why he's so, He's so effective, the, the Donald, the con man Donald, is because he's talking to people that don't even know what they're talking about. Let's listen again. So now that we know what a trade deficit is, now that we know that the trade deficit is, is increasing, right? More, we're, we're buying more than we're selling. Listen to Trump again. Thanks to our powerful trade policies, the trade deficit is falling and falling and falling, and boy, did it fall this quarter. Okay, blatant lie, no evidence to support what he just said. But he's saying it, and nobody cares. The days of plundering American jobs and American wealth, those days are over. They're over. Well, prove it. Where? Where is it over? Just because you say it's over? Uh, So this is buffoon in, in, in chief. America first. America first. Yeah, America first. You mean China first. We're also living by two very important rules. Buy American and hire American. How has that worked out? It doesn't it hasn't worked out. Your your theory on economics is wrong. You gave billionaires, you gave the corporations all the power and all the money. You gave them a trillion and a half dollars and they're sitting on their hands. It's getting worse, you idiot, you fool.
Last week, I visited with hundreds of American steelworkers. Oh, fuck you, you idiot. All right, so we're back to to trade, right? So, so let's look at some of the uh, let's look at some of this here. These are some charts, right? So here's here's the reality of of our existence in America. This is real inflation, right? Now look down here. You see this red line over here? Red line is what people made uh, the thirty five thousand. Well, let's go even further down. Yellow. Yellow is the people that made mean in two thousand seventeen thirty five thousand dollars. That's the Probably half of the country right now making that kind of money, scraping by abject poverty, right? Just just enough to squeak by, right? Down here, right? And you look in 1960 over here, it was below 50 grand. This is probably like 20, 25. Now it's wow, it's all the way up. To, it, it didn't move. It didn't move. The people that are making a lot of money, of course, it went up, but our income didn't go up in all of these years. We haven't gotten a raise in, since 1965, right? But here's cumulative inflation, right? So if you look, to be fair, not from 1910, but from right here, 1970, where it was about 200%, and it went up to 2,000%, right? It's Inflation is 10 times, but your income hasn't gone up even one time. All right, so so that's hyperinflation. It's just spread out over a long period of time that your dollars don't have any power. That's why people working two, three jobs don't have enough to scrape by. It's it's just common sense, right? This is the evidence. Right? Forget about what's coming out of Trump's hole. This is the evidence. Right? Oop, <laughs> slipped that one in there. He, he's, they make a great couple, though. You know, it's fucking. At least he's doing something, right? He's getting something right. He made a friend. He's got a, Trump's got a friend. Uh, so here's medium rents. Rents. Let's look at rent. Most people rent, especially in cities, right? So the red line is medium rent from 1960, right? And that's up 160% from, from 1960, right? The, and this the green line is medium income, right? So people make 100 and uh, may, their income went up 120%. But their rents went up 160%. Right? That sounds right. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Or shouldn't it be at least income goes up with the price of rent? No, everything is inflating. Everything is inflating. And, and our, we don't have the buying power anymore, right? As, as human beings, as the 99%. Right? This is interesting, too. So, so here you got a chart, right? It's... it's um, Right, so 60, look at this, dual income, right? Dual income back in the 60s was 25%. That means the father worked, or, or the mother worked, somebody worked. And it went from 25% to 60%. At that time, the, the idea of the father working was 70% of the families had a father working. Now it's 31%. So you see how it, it switched in the 80s, right around where Reagan came in, Right? They put everybody to work. Everybody's working more and making less. That's the theory of economics. Give all the money to the rich. Right? It works. Right? Reaganomics. I'm, I'm all for it. All right, so I'll uh, jam up. So, uh, oh, so here's a good one, too. Labor force participation rates. Right? So... Here's uh, the 80s, 1980s. Again, right when Reagan came in, January 80s. 80, this is Jimmy Carter, right? It was, it was flat, right? And then then Reagan came in through gas on the flyer, 1986, right? And labor force participation did increase, right? But look where it is now, right? It's in the last since 2008, it's collapsing. The idea of Reaganomics is collapsing by giving all the fucking money and all the fucking power to the corporations, right? All the benefits, pff, it goes to the shitter, right? You got to change the, 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 the ideology, right? Oh, look, this is at least incarcerated humans are up, right? Here's prisons. Yeah. So there's the, uh, so jails, right, <laughs> are... Are uh, there's more people in prison, incarcerated Americans, from 1920 to 2014? Wow, we're, we're gaining at least in something. 
At least something, right? Well, at least we have more people in jails, right? Because there's money in jails. Right? One more chart. Oh, here's defense spending. Look, we're doing good, right? See, this is this giant boner right here is the war, 1946, right? Where where spending was way up, right? But look where we are now. We spend just as much as we did when it was a fucking war, and we don't have an enemy. Right? So this steady incline is indicative of the military-industrial complex, right? Because war is good. War is profitable. When we spend, we make. Right? That's, that's how the rich people think. Right? So let's play one last video. Somebody who was saying it before anyone was saying it. No, not the socialist. Conti, don't do it. Not the, don't play the socialist. Don't play the socialist. All right, so Alan Greenspan, for everybody who doesn't know, Alan Greenspan was the mastermind behind Reaganomics. The, he was the believer. He was the fall-down believer, the appointee of Ronald Reagan, who ran the Fed Reserve. Got to get rid of the Fed, yeah, but he, this is the guy that is still running the theory of our, 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 our economics. So let's check it out. Thank you. Mr. Sanders? Thank you, Madam Chair, and Mr. Greenspan, nice to see you again. Uh, Mr. Greenspan... You could always find Bernie Sanders saying something, something correct 10 years, 20 years before uh, the crash, right? So here we go again, one more time. Spend. I have long been concerned that you are way out of touch with the needs of the middle class and working families of our country, that you see your major function in your position as the need to represent the wealthy and large corporations. And I must tell you that your testimony today only cons confirms all of my suspicions. And I urge you, and I mean this seriously, because you're an honest person. I, th I think you just don't know what's going on in the real world. And I would urge you, come with me to Vermont, meet real people. The country clubs and the cocktail parties are not real America. The millionaires and billionaires are the exception to the rule. You talk about an improving economy while we have lost 3 million private sector jobs in the last two years. This is 2003, by the way. 2003. Long-term unemployment has more than tripled. Unemployment is higher than it has been since 1994. We have a $4 trillion national debt. 1.4 million Americans have lost their health insurance. Millions of seniors can't afford prescription drugs. Middle-class families can't send their kids to college because they don't have the money to do that. Bankruptcy, bankruptcy cases have increased by a record-breaking 23%. Business investment is at its lowest level in more than 50 years. CEOs make more than 500 times of what their workers make. The middle class is shrinking. We have the greatest gap between the rich and the poor of any industrialized nation, and this is an economy that is improving. I hate to see what would happen if our economy was sinking. Now, today, you may not have known this. I suspect that you don't, but you have insulted tens of millions of American workers. You have defended over the years, among other things, the abolition of the minimum wage, one of your policies, and giving huge tax breaks to billionaires. But today you reached a new low, I think, by suggesting that manufacturing in America doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the product is produced. We lost two million manufacturers. Look how stupid he looks right now. Because he's everything is it's all coming to roost, right? The whole lie of the 80s and Reaganomics. Now, to, to, to Reaganomics' credit, it did work for a hot minute, maybe for a couple of minutes. The idea of the tax breaks was a stimulating idea, but once you give billions of dollars to people, they get lazy. So for a hot minute, it did work. But for 30, 80, 50, how many years later since the 80s? How, what year is it? It's already 50 years. 40 years ago, right? 35 years ago. Right? It stopped working. Actoring jobs in the last two years alone, 10% of our workforce. Walmart has replaced General Motors as the major employer in America paying people starvation wages rather than living wages, and all of that does not matter to you. Doesn't matter if it's produced in China, where workers are making 30 cents an hour, or produced in Vermont, where workers can make 20 bucks an hour. It doesn't matter. You have told the American people 
that you support a trade policy which is selling them out, only working for the CEOs who can take our plants to China, Mexico, and India. You insulted Mr. Castle. Mr. Castle, a few moments ago, a good Republican, told you that we're seeing not only the decline of manufacturing jobs, but white-collar information technology jobs. Forrester Research says that over the next 15 years, 3.3 million U.S. service industry jobs and 136 billion in wages will move offshore to India, Russia, China, and the Philippines. Does any of this matter, matter to you? Do you give one whit of concern to the middle class and working families of this country? That's my question. <laughs> Congressman, we have the highest standard of living in the world. No, we do not. You go to Scandinavia and you will find that people have a much higher standard of living in terms for of education, health care, and decent paying jobs. What is standard of living is, is, is subjective. Working 80 hours a week and squeaking by is not a good standard of living. It's not measured in, in, the, in the dollar value that you make, but it's, it's people that like, for example, the old Native American Indians, they would lay around and they'd, they'd, they'd go out and they'd hunt. You know, the land was abundant. They'd gather food. They'd, they'd have some sex. They'd, you know what I mean? Like, they had, a, they, had a, they had leisure time. They played with the kids. They smoked a hookah, you know? They had a better standard of living, and they, didn't, they lived in a cot or lived in a teepee. Right? So what is standard of living? Standard of living is low on stress, the ability to, to, to pick up your guitar and play and, and, and have some fun, right? People don't have any fun anymore, right? Wrong, Mr. May Greenspan. I answer your question? You sure may. Thank you. For a major industrial country, we have created the most advanced technologies, the highest standard of living for a country of our size. He's, he's just wrong. He's absolutely fucking wrong, right? And, he's, and you're going to see him admit it later. I'll keep going. Our economic growth is crucial to us. The incomes, the purchasing power of our employees, our workers, our people, are by far more important than what it is we produce. I submit to you that, uh, may I? That's, uh, that's the exact opposite of, of truth. That, it, it, again, because he's selling out the jobs, right? That, that, what we produce doesn't matter as long as we make money, right? That's a welfare state, and that's what—that's essentially what uh, what these guys have, Greenspan and and uh, the rest have created. So here's here's this is brilliant, right? And what I'm saying to you is, yes, yes, I found a flaw. I don't know how significant or permanent it is, but I've been very distressed by that fact. But if I may, may I just finish an answer to the? So he finds a flaw. This is five years later after he's not, he's the former chairman. And now he's fessing up. Listen to what he says. Question previously. You, you found this, a flaw in a, a the flaw, reality. A flaw in the model that I perceived is the critical functioning structure that defines how the world works, so to speak. In other words. A flaw. Listen to this again. This is, you, you got to listen to the whole thing. The, the question previously. You, you found this, a flaw in a the flaw, reality a flaw in the model that I perceived is the critical functioning structure that defines how the world works, so to speak. In other words, you found that your your view of the world, your ideology, was not right. It was that, not working. Was, it had a, it, precisely. No, I, that's precisely the reason I was shocked because I had been going for 40 years or more with very considerable evidence that it was working exceptionally well. 40 a uh, Bernie oh yes. it was a Bernie video Bernie knew all along that it was a flaw in ideology yeah he did he did and he's still saying it but uh, people are still not listening they want to label him he's too old he's a Jew he's 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 a socialist uh, whatever so what did we learn today what did we learn today about about buffoon in in charge his trade deficit right not only is he lying but he's 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 he's, he's doing what I've told you the whole time, which is he's advancing a failed economic policy that stems from Reagan that was supported by Alan Greenspan and the Fed, right? And, okay, so you have to, what is the solution? You have to go after the corporations. You've got to tax them. 
You could you can get rid of the Fed, but the banks are still going to rob you blind. The six top banks. You think they're going to go down? You're going to go down in flames if you you remove the Fed and they don't get their free money. Right? They're going to go down too. So tax the fucking shit out of them. If the Fed is going to give free money, let them give it to the free to the people. Right? So there's a there's a, a million ways I'm going to go, but I just want to leave it that. That this is this is the this is what we're faced with right now. We're faced with a turning point. Do we continue to go down the road of 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 failed economic policy, or do we lobby for for a new direction, a new deal for the American people? Right? We want to keep calling each other names: capitalist, socialist, communist, commie little, commie little Jew, whatever you want to say. Right? Fuck you. Uh, uh, to, People that, that you know, I'm I'm getting I'm I'm losing my my uh, I'm losing my ability, my patience with uh, with the the blind, stupid fucking Trump jerk offs, right? <laughs> really, wake up, man! Wake up! Listen to Q. Wake up! <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Marcus Conti reporting.